And welcome back to Metropole Sports Center. My name is Nashun Owano. Now, time for us to look at the weekly or the week one analysis of the English Premier League. And in studio today, I'm joined by Elijah Simba Charles Kiage. I still don't understand why he usually introduces himself in three names. Maybe he will tell us. Now, Simba, it has been quite an uh, interesting week one in the English Premier League with a total of 15 goals scored between the first four games, that is uh, Fulham, Liverpool, Chelsea and Tottenham Hotspurs. I would, uh, I would be interested basically to understand what's your take on the game between Arsenal and Fulham? I think I remember when I uh, we were here sort of reviewing what the Premier League is going to be for this season. Mm. And I did say Arsenal look very confident. Mm -hmm. That's, I mean, I think even when you have players in between a game, the only thing that you need to have is confidence. That we believe that if we act and, and play the way in which that we've been training, then we're going to give you the results. Mm -hmm. and th this is how. When Aubameyang is scoring replica goals in just a couple of two weeks difference, mm -hmm. that tells you they have practiced that in training. Mm -hmm. I, I think you saw the Aubameyang goal that is same same goal that is scored when we're playing against Liverpool. Yeah, yeah. Same players around him that mm -hmm. tells you that same same attacking same, same attacking side style. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. Let's pull them in and then after that pour out mm -hmm. in a, in a very good attack. Mm -hmm. That tells you that the guys were very confident. And the fact that we had El Nene playing, mm -hmm. all right? Mm -hmm. The fact that we didn't have Luis playing, mm -hmm. that for me shows you that Arsenal is very confident this season. Good thing for Fulham, they're back again, but I don't think they needed Arsenal as their first game to mm -hmm. start the league with. Okay, they needed, they needed at least time to, you know, That's play it. a couple That's of it. few games. That's now, it. in the when you're talking about the Ateta style of play, personally, I was interested in seeing whether William was going to adapt to that particular style of play. And uh, look like pretty much he understands what Ateta wants the in thing, the game. The thing about William, and, and I don't know what Lampard was smoking when he said, <laughs> Let him go to Arsenal. Why? Yeah. Why did they let William go? Mm -hmm. That's a player who's got like a couple, what, two, three good seasons in him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Three seasons. Three seasons in yeah, him at yeah. most. Mm -hmm. So what did Chelsea need? Chelsea need a good two, three seasons mm -hmm. for us to start talking about their success. And I will let you know. And and I say this today because of the experience that William has already had in the Premier League, mm -hmm. is going to be one of those star players. Mm -hmm. And you saw that mm -hmm. it was very good for him to bench Pepe, and you could actually see how he was very effective mm -hmm. in the way that he played. Mm -hmm. Three assets on his mm -hmm. first game mm -hmm. that shows you that somebody was really walking up. Mm -hmm. And the fact that he was able to sort of distribute those passes, I will mm -hmm. tell you the assists yeah. that led to Aubameyang's yeah. goal. That's experience. He was he was basically involved in That's all. That's it. All, that, he all was involved goals. in all the goals. Yeah. But if you look at those passes he was making, that is somebody who knows mm. a player like Aubameyang is gonna be here. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna give him this pass there. A player like uh, Lacaz is gonna be in the box. Mm -hmm. So it's exactly the way they need to distribute this ball. Mm. And I, I bet you mm -hmm. this season and next season, William is gonna be among the top. Uh, assisters in the Premier League and I can't wait for his first goal mm -hmm. and it's going to be spectacular. Okay. Yeah. So actually the first goal that was scored, uh, Lacaz, the, the first goal that Lacazette scored, but it should have been a William goal. should have been a William yeah, goal, yeah, isn't yeah. it? Mm -hmm, yeah. That would have been the perfect debut for William. Though it, was, it was sort of like an accident but either way a goal is a goal. Either way know? a goal is a yeah. goal is the three points that we need man mm -hmm. and the yeah. clean sheet as well. Mm -hmm. yes. Speaking of uh, debut, Gabriel Magales made Ooh, his debut that's another one. In, the, in, the, in the game. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, were you impressed by how Gabriel Magales played in this Most particular fixture? Definitely. Good thing is, started a bit slow mm -hmm. in the first half. Mm -hmm. Guys were like, oh, I, we, we're not so sure where Saliba and all that. Funny enough, even Saliba didn't make it even to the squad. Mm -hmm. That tells you now that Ateta is finally having options at the back line. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're going to talk about how holding turned into another Ronaldinho. But other than that, Magales settled them. Now, number one, when you have a goal on your debut, but mm -hmm. it's not even about the goal because mm -hmm. when you're a defender, the only thing you're supposed to do is just defend. Yeah. But when you're among the number one players in terms of complete passes, mm -hmm. in that game when you're just a defender, mm -hmm. complete tackles, and pass accuracy, you're still number one. I mean, you're basically the man of the game, mm -hmm. just that they couldn't give him, they couldn't give him that. Mm -hmm. That was spectacular. Mm -hmm. So the thing is, how do we build up from that? So probably we could be talking about a Van Dijk at Arsenal, mm -hmm. but a younger version of that in Magales. But oof, mm -hmm. that. I think now we have, for the very first time, we have 
Somebody who looks solid. Mm -hmm. This at is the his first at the defense. Yeah, yeah. Somebody who knows. And I think and I think that squad is going to be bolstered if we have Thomas Partey come into that's the squad. That's I'm gonna a, be I mean, a we're perfect. Praying we're praying for that's that. gonna be a perfect combination. Let's, let's pray for that. Mm -hmm. Let's pray for that. Everybody is praying for Partey. But then we we're just hoping Patti and Aura to come in. Mm -hmm. And I probably Zaha as well. Mm -hmm. I mean now it's done that we can bring him in. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm hoping that a teta um, a Teta convincing Aubameyang to sign the contract mm -hmm. was based on the fact that yes, mm -hmm. I am going to bring guys in who can make you a legend. Mm -hmm. Hopefully now, before mm -hmm. October ends, we're going to see these big names that we're waiting for. Interesting, yeah. you've mentioned uh, Aubameyang signing his uh, his his contract. Three year Actu contract. Actually, that yeah. that is what I was going into. Uh, did you, at some point, as a national fan, have jitters about him not being able to sign that contract? Yes. Mm -hmm. And I will take you back. Mm -hmm. Van Persie, mm -hmm. Sanchez, mm -hmm. Ramsey, Fabricas, mm -hmm. Song Belong. There's so many. I can go forever, all right? Mm -hmm. Thierry Henry. I can go forever. But here's the thing, though. And all of them sort of left at the last minute. Yeah. You remember Van Persie? Van Persie, uh, personally, I think I had, uh, I had a Van, Van Persie moment, uh, right? Yeah, I had a Van Persie moment and I had a Van Persie t-shirt. So in the next season, when the season was starting, I, I was picturing a situation where you have a Van Persie jersey, but he's not, not there. in, in it's Arsenal. Not, you know. it's, not, it's not there. Mm. So, but one thing I liked about how Ateta really played it, he said, well, look, I can assure you, he's not living. Mm -hmm. I'm quite confident. I'm quite positive. Now, my, my point is this. I hope that the delay was them telling their captain, mm -hmm. look, these are the plans that we have for the team. And you will think mm -hmm. this can make you greater than you are right now. Mm -hmm. And but the thing is also, God played. I don't want to say God. Wow. <laughs> Things played in our way. Yeah. Maybe God hates us. No, who knows? Things <laughs> played in our way. Yeah, uh -huh. and we won the community shield. Mm -hmm. And here's the thing: we beat bigger teams to winning it. Mm -hmm. The fact that we beat Chelsea, Liverpool. the fact that we beat uh, we beat Liverpool just to win this mm -hmm. also shows you that well, that is a sign that things are good. Mm -hmm. Or they're gonna be good this mm -hmm. season. Mm -hmm. So for Aubameyang signing for me, that is the signing of the season, mm -hmm. not just for Arsenal, mm -hmm. but just in the Premier League. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's good that we have Aubameyang mm -hmm. in the Premier League. Okay. Yes. So I think. Uh, uh, one particular person, okay, he's a he's a Manchester United fan. That is Clint Asena. I'm pretty sure. Oh, well, we don't care. We don't care for Clint. I'm pretty sure he's he's happy now because. And funny enough, you might find that he's in his fantasy in uh -huh. his fantasy whatever team. Yeah, he has Obama. Of course. And then he comes in and talks bad about Obama. Yeah, yeah that's that's the sad thing. <laughs> but uh, speaking speaking of uh, speaking of uh, before we we move into the se the next seg segment where we're going to be talking about the performance of Liverpool and Leeds United. Uh, we can't run away from this. There's been people bashing the Manchester United uh, third kit. Yeah, zebras in the, the making. Zebras in the making. What was somebody thinking when they said that well, that is going to be? But but but, but I, I like to see where the design of the kit is going. Mm -hmm. Arsenal guys are saying that we got it from beans or what? What we call? What, I don't know. Duma. What they, on Duma. <laughs> for lack for lack of an English word, what we call Duma in 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 English? I don't know that. <laughs> but I like where it's going. You can actually see bold kits. Yeah. Isn't that? Mm. I can't wait for every time that mm. uh, uh, Manchester United are gonna play in the third kit and they lose, mm -hmm. you're gonna see the memes that are gonna come out of that. Now the interesting thing is people are joking that um, the the owner, or not not the owner actually. Uh, the person was the designer, the designer the, was, the was was given the job of designing a kit, and then that night he went and watched Madagascar. I saw that. that that's a killer. Uh, then in the morning he came with an inim. Just before we move into the Leeds versus uh, Liverpool game, this is just how the statistics between the game of Arsenal and Fulham uh, stood out. Now, in terms of possession, Arsenal had a possession of 54.4 percent, and then shots on target six. Um, uh, shots on target, that is Arsenal had 13 and uh, Fulham had 5. In terms of total touches of the ball in the pitch, Arsenal had 626 touches of the ball and Fulham had 523. In terms of fouls conceded, Arsenal conceded 12. Uh, Fulham also conceded 12 fouls in the course of the game. A total of 12 tackles were uh, successful by Arsenal and also 11 tackles by Fulham. Now switching on into the Liverpool versus Leeds United game, this is how the match statistics stood out. That is in terms of possession, Leeds United had a possession of 51.2%. 
um, 51.2%, and then shots on target. Uh, Liverpool had six, um, Leeds United had three, and then we had shots on goal that is 22 for Liverpool, and then Leeds United six, and then touches uh, Leeds United 695 against uh, Liverpool 661. Um, Simba, those are, that's an interesting match statistic. What was your take in terms of how Leeds United came out in this particular fixture? Were you impressed by their performance? They were supposed to win. Mm -hmm. I still am saying the second penalty was not supposed to be awarded. Mm -hmm. the first, it, even the first penalty was not supposed to be awarded. Mm -hmm. So when you look at that game, Leeds was supposed to win. Mm -hmm. And I say this, that Leeds poise a very strong challenge to Premier League teams this season. Maybe we can talk about Liverpool. Mm -hmm. But, well, there are two, uh, two talking points there. Mm -hmm. Maybe Leeds are very good, mm -hmm. or Liverpool is shaky. Yeah. And they are shaky. Mm -hmm. Look at that. Uh, I, th I, I agree with you yes. on that, yes. because if you, look at, if you look at the goals that even were scored by Liverpool, there was sort of like a reaction. It was a reaction to what Leeds were doing. Yeah. And I, I, but, Let's let's talk about the weakest. Uh, I know most people are going to look at them and then say, "No, Simba, you can't say that, man." This man Van Dijk. Mm. Do you know that he is the worst defender in the Premier League right now? Mm. I know most most Liverpool most fans are not agree. Most the yeah, worst yeah. man. Okay. But when you look at a defender who has the most mistakes that lead to a goal, mm. and your job is a defender, mm. then you are basically the worst defender in the league. Mm. Fine, I'm, I'm not going to get into what is done in terms of interceptions and all that. People will come and say, wow, and the number of goals that is scored, and assists will come and say, wow, no, but if you look at it from this other side. But mm -hmm. when you are a defender, mm -hmm. and you are the leader in terms of the mistakes that are causing goals, mm -hmm. then you are basically not one of the best defenders in the world. Mm -hmm. No, you're not. Mm -hmm. And that is the weakness that we're talking about. You saw the goal. Yeah. That the Actually, he's, he's, scored, yeah? he's the one who, who made Liverpool concede that. Isn't goal. it? The second goal. Yeah. That was not supposed to be a goal mm. because the, even, I, I would say, even a rookie defender would know mm. at that position you're supposed to play Shoot. safe. Clear. Get it out. Clear. Yeah. What are you trying to show us? That mm. I'm a Van Dijk? Mm -hmm. I can cause a goal and then go score? What if he didn't score? Yeah. To consolidate that that the, the goal. Mm. My point is this: Liverpool haven't been big in uh, in transfer business. Good, they've got Thiago. Mm -hmm. But then you ask yourself the question: Is Thiago what they needed? Their defense still needs a lot of fixing. Mm. I think that. I think I think yes. at their defense they've 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 sort of have this over reliance on Van Dijk. Uh, picturing a situation where if uh, Vigil Van Dijk gets. Uh, injured, then, then what, happens, what, what are their or probable or options? As, yeah. as you would expect for defenders, then yeah. what, what, what's going to happen? Mm. Because then Liverpool will all of a sudden look shaky. Because yeah. my question is this, what if they didn't get the penalties that they got that day, mm -hmm. or what if they didn't get the four goals they got that day? Mm. But my, my point is, for a Liverpool team, if they really want to retain their title. Mm. Hopefully they do because mm. I don't want Arsenal to win. I just want Arsenal to, Actually, to I want build up to yeah. build up to mm -hmm. top four. Mm -hmm. and five is good for us. But mm. here's the thing. My point is this. If you are a team that says we want to retain this league, mm -hmm. then some of the things that we saw mm. against Leeds should not be recorded. Mm. Yeah? Mm -hmm. I mean, why would Leeds score three goals against you? Yeah. yeah? I mean, and there were, the and there were superb goals, you know. Yeah, yeah, here's the thing. People say, fine, even in last season, yes, mm -hmm. they were really shipping in goals. Good. Mm -hmm. But, uh-uh. At the level that you're shipping them right now, if you get a good contender, mm -hmm. yeah, and I'm not going to say it's going to be Arsenal, mm -hmm. but uh, Arsenal look that they're the good ones now mm -hmm. for that, then if you don't get a reaction, mm -hmm. then what happens? Mm -hmm. And the fact that Firmino didn't score, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. the, the fact that Sane didn't score, it was two penalties and one headed goal from Van Dijk. Yeah. What and happens Salah, then? Salah, Salah also come, yeah. came through. For what, what happens? What mm -hmm. happens? Mm -hmm. What happens? Yeah, so um, as, we, as we wrap up the Leeds versus uh, Liverpool, do you think uh, Premier League teams should be afraid of Leeds? Should, do they have a reason to be afraid this season? Yes, they should. And, and this is my thinking. I'm, I'm going to point you out some of the players that I really think are, are going to be threats mm. for Premier League teams this season. Rodrigo, he didn't get to play, mm -hmm. all right? Mm -hmm. But woof, had he played, people saying that they could have gotten that one goal yeah. that could have led to um, a draw against that against that uh, against that match Liverpool. against Liverpool. Mm -hmm. Now another one that I really want to point out to is Harrison. People spoke about him before. And you will see he came in and scored as well mm -hmm. you know so when you have this this players that people are talking about uh that they're really good and they, they actually show that they're very good at the, at the first game of the season in the top flight mm -hmm. after 16 years of absence guess what 
they are a threat. And the fact that Leeds actually won this championship before getting promoted to the league, mm. that's a team that you need to, to be scared about. Okay. Yes. So we'll be taking a short commercial break, but after the break we'll be looking at the Brighton versus Chelsea. Now we take a short commercial break. Um, after that, Simba is still going to be joining me on set. You're going to be looking at the match statistic that is Brighton versus Chelsea and uh, the other fixture games that were played on week one of the English Premier League. See you after the break. <laughs> 